I've got the blazer on the ramps today. It needs an oil change. However, I've got an issue and I haven't dealt with it yet because I didn't want to. But now is the perfect time. My oil cooler lines are leaking uh, pretty bad actually. It's hard to tell exactly which one is leaking worse, but they do appear to both be leaking. Um, from my understanding, the setup on my oil cooler system is pretty easy to remove and I think it comes right off the block and then I can just go and bolt the filter straight up to the truck. Now I don't really do any heavy towing. Uh, I don't do extended, you know, extended uh, spirited driving, let's say. So if I can eliminate that thing and not have to have the oil cooler here, that's going to solve my oil leak issue right off the bat in the first try. So that's what I'm going to make an attempt at doing today and see if it's going to cooperate with me. Looking from above and in. <coughs> See if we can get you guys a good angle. So we're going down in the engine bay here. You can see these lines are all caked with oil and they run into the rad and then they're in their own independent cooling system within the radiator. So of course the radiator is more expensive because it's got all the extra passages in it. It's got a trans cooler, it's got an oil cooler. Does it have power steering cooler, this one? Yes, it does. Oh, maybe not, I'm lying. No, no power steering cooler, but it's got oil and trans, and then obviously radiator. Um, <clears throat> and I'm looking at the big space I have in the front of the radiator here, and I'm thinking I'm gonna try something. That Cadillac DeVille that I've got parked in the barn, their cooling fans would totally fit behind this grill. I've got one in here right now that actually came off of my Grand Am, and it literally just clears. I had to remount the fan with a spacer of some kind to actually push it closer to the rad but everything does work currently but I'm thinking to add the extra cooling fan on the front end um, mostly for the air conditioner because the air conditioner doesn't really seem to uh, kick out all that much cold air probably because that fan isn't moving as much CFM as the original uh, mechanical fan would have. Alrighty I cracked the uh, Torx bolts loose so now we're gonna see when this cooler comes off what exactly we are up against so here's what I was able to figure out I had the um, cooler adapter right off the truck not the lines the lines are still attached to the rad um, but I was looking at what is below it at the block there's no center spout at the block which makes sense but it is threaded in so I found my Allen key that fits inside of the uh, center spout and I started, I, I actually ex put an extension on the end of my Allen key and then cranked it off here. So I broke it loose and now I'm just unthreading it. And I'm gonna see if that same adapter will fit into the engine block. Hopefully it does and I can just use this then. Um, I'm gonna find out. So now I'll just take the uh, adapter back off. I only put it on there because I didn't want to have to hold the thing and try to break it free. You can see the bolts were barely even snug. So I'm going to take these out and we're going to see what we saw. So I've got the adapter off again and check that out. It threads right into the block. Next I'll clean the mating surface on the, on the block because I did have uh, RTV on there and I'm just gonna scrape it down to bare block and then the oil seal on the filters should catch and seal that up really well. And I've just successfully eliminated my oil cooler without buying anything. I'm literally just taking it off. I know the four wheel drive trucks have a relocating kit that actually puts this thing up in the fender well. Um, I, I don't mind going underneath to change it. This one's two-wheel drive, so I've got a different approach here. Uh, however, this thing has been leaking for a bit, and the replacement lines, according to the parts store locally, weren't available. And to be honest with you, I didn't really try sourcing them out. I didn't go to the dealer. I didn't really look on Summit or anything along those lines. I wanted to see what options were available, and I did do a little bit of research on the forums. I honestly spent 20 minutes just reading up 
and I didn't see anybody saying that this method was available. There was a lot of talk about the 4x4 uh, version of this truck, but this one obviously being two-wheel drive is a little different scenario. So anybody who was considering deleting this thing because it does leak, it seems like this is a viable option. I'll find out, of course, momentarily when I go to f install the new filter. I'll test fit everything before I actually uh, go and, and fill it with oil and, and finish the oil change. Uh, but at least this seems like an option at this point. So I'm going to take this cooler right out. I'm going to take the lines off the rad, get rid of it completely. i got to clean that block up really nice. And I'm going to get ready to install that filter and we'll see what happens. The whole assembly pops right out after you undo the two um, lines that run into the radiator. There it is sitting there. One of my O-rings was totally deteriorated into the rad at the bottom. But the other line was the one that appeared to have a really bad leak. So I don't really know what to make of it. And to be honest, it's been more of a nuisance than anything. So repairs are not really something that I'm wanting to even attempt on it. Because it didn't really benefit me to have that oil cooler. It was just more crap that can go wrong in this scenario. This cleans up the engine bay a little ways too. And I'll, I'll keep an eye on uh, on my temperature. And I mean, it's, it's coolant temperature that it's reading with the gauges. Um, but my engine has run cool ever since I did this rebuild and installed those headers. Truthfully, I think that in particular made a big difference. Running these headers seems to get things down quite a bit temperature wise. So if that's the, uh, the general outcome, if that doesn't really change, then I'm really not gonna be too concerned about it. I just wanna get this mating surface cleaned up as I discussed. So once I get the paint scraped off and any sealant that's left over, um, then we should be, sorry, then we should be ready to test fit the oil filter and uh, get this sucker working again. So I'm just gonna scrape that until it's clean so you're not missing much. Well, the adapter is all set. When I test fit. I'm gonna dry fit the oil filter and just make sure that it does do everything it needs to. The mating surface is all cleaned up. That's perfect. It fits on just as it should. So I'm going to wipe down this area, fill this filter up with oil, tighten my drain plug, thread this puppy on. We should be laughing. I should be able to change my oil without worrying about those cooler lines dripping all the time now. Right on. Whew, it is mighty hot out here. I just finished putting together my intake pipe. Um, the oil cooler lines are gone as we mentioned before. So you see the port on the top of the rad where it used to roll. If you look down and under there, I just shoved a piece of rag into that old port hole. The thought would be that anything that's still in that rad should slowly drip into that, uh, or anything that's still in the radiator will slowly drip out into that rag and shouldn't leave oil drops for me. If I just uh, change that thing regularly a couple of times, I should be all set not have to worry about that anymore. Under the truck itself, now it's just, let's see if we can get you under there. Now it's just a plain old oil filter. Uh, no nothing happening there out of the ordinary. I see some oil drips that I must have missed. I'm gonna go under there and make sure that that's in fact all that it is. And I've now got this sucker full of oil and I'm ready to start it up. Okay, holy cow, it's hot in here. I'm gonna watch that oil pressure come up. Beautiful. Now let's check for leaks. Excellent. So I was able to successfully pull off the oil cooler and make everything work again. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And uh, next time, maybe we'll do a little bit of uh, visual repairs on that rear bumper and try to get the uh, impact strip set up again.